Welcome, you are tuned into Box Story. My name is Rack Noble. Today, we have a special guest with us who's looking to take her first steps inside the boxing world. Child actor turned philanthropist, Tammy Terrin. Tammy, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad myself. It's all, I'm doing good. Um, so just tell us, tell us a bit little about what you've been up to. Well, I started my career as an elite model when I was eight years old. And in that first year, I actually became an international model doing international campaigns with Elite. Then I went on to do more commercials, more modeling. And then when I was 11, I won the role of Pippi Longstocking in the movie, The New Adventures of Pippi Longstocking, out of over 8,000 young actresses worldwide. Oh, impressive, impressive. So by the sounds of it, you've had a full career from age of eight years old. You were singing, dancing, acting, modeling, doing commercials. And I did a bit of research. Later on, you picked up fashion design, philanthropy, and running your own businesses. Other than boxing, yeah. which we'll get into a little bit later on, is there anything else down the line that you've got planned? Because you sound like a very active person. Well, yeah, once we, you know, once we're out of the lockdown and we can go back to doing movies, then I'm excited to do more movies. I've done a number of movies after Pippi, after the world tour and, and continuing on. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited for things to open up again. But right now, people can find me on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and Tammy Aaron, T-A-M-I-E-R-I-N. I'll be sure to put all of the links to all of your content in the description below. Um, have you got any projects in specific that you're currently working on that you'd like to tell your people about? Well, a few of them, if they want to buy, you mentioned that I'm a fashion designer. I was doing that for a long time and I have lines that have sold worldwide. So if you want to purchase Pippi Longstocking inspired merch, then go to shoppippi.com. There's also autographed movies and uh, merch there for that. If you're interested in my sexy side, then you can find me on OnlyFans and then also on Patreon, Tammy Aaron Official. And then for celebrity video messages worldwide, you can find me on Cameo. All of these links will be in the description below. Um, mm -hmm. So working on such large film projects and film sets, that gives one access to see places and opportunities most would never ever dream of seeing. What have been some of your most memorable and favorite moments in a very, very colorful career? Well, the first was I was the guest of the Princess of Japan, Nori, Emperor Hirohito's granddaughter, for the first Royal World premiere. I was there for two weeks. It was amazing. And that was the first time that I got to see my movie on the big screen. It was in English with Japanese subtitles down the side. Second, I went to Sweden for a few weeks and I was the guest of King Carl and Queen Sylvia. And then I went to Germany for four cities, did a TV show with Sylvester Stallone. And then I did 13 cities in the US and that was the world tour. So the whole process was cast at 11, a year and a half of pre-production for me to prepare to do all of my, the majority of my own stunts and method acting on both coasts. And then we filmed, then there was post-production and then there was the world tour, which was another year and a half. So it was four and a half years total. Oh, wow. so that's a lot of time to put into a film, but it definitely seems <laughs> yeah. to be worthwhile because even today, Pippi Longstocking, the character, this franchise is remembered. Everyone knows who Pippi Longstocking is. I would say it was definitely the childhood, the childhood icon of the 80s and 90s. And even up until now, people still know who they are. So Yeah, the director, Ken, he actually said, Pippi is the girl that girls want to be and that boys want to be with. So, but when he spoke about me specifically, he said that I'm Pippi Longstocking, I radiate sunshine. And Astrid, the author of the series of Pippi Longstocking books, I went to her home when I was in Sweden. She would always come to me because we did promotional photo shoots. My Pippi, my Pippi, for us to do our photos together. It's very sweet. Well, they chose you out of 8,000 other competitors. So yeah. the role must just had Tammy Erin written all over it. It must have just been you down to the core. Uh, very much. <laughs> there are so many similarities. You, you know, we talked earlier about the 16 countries that I've adventured to, but I think a lot of it has to do with my free spirit. Obviously, the way that I look played a part in that. Um, but also that I came into it as a, you know, a child from Hollywood, but also a real kid. I did advanced gymnastics. I was an equestrian riding horses. I was more of like a rough and tumble. Mm -hmm. you know, tomboy type of girl, which Pippi Longstocking is. And also, um, you know, standing up, being heroic, a little bit naughty and uh, having fun. So yeah, all those things. 
yeah, you definitely embodied all those characteristics of children and what children aim and want to be. So that was, it was a perfect role model for the time, especially for young girls growing up. You know, a bit later on down the line, we had Matilda, but Pippi Longstocking at that time, she was brave, courageous. She could lift up horses. She had super strength. Mm-hmm. I think even some Strongest boys, in the world. even some boys yeah, are jealous also, of that. Well, <laughs> um, further, I told my parents when I was five years old, I would go around, I want to be a movie star. My parents actually laughed at me and they said, of course, you want to be a movie star, Tammy. Everybody wants to be a movie star. Well, five years old to 11, I'm hey, a movie star. You did it. <laughs> you proved them wrong. Before even an adult, you're able to prove your parents wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, I've seen... So on camera, you've been a bit quiet though for the last few years, but nonetheless, you're still getting tens of thousands of views and comments on YouTube, mentions on Twitter, likes on Instagram, still very noticeable, um, still very popular in the public eye. What's been your secret behind this? How have you just kept everyone talking? Um, Well, I think that I love to be outrageous and I love to be the center of attention. When the camera is on, I feel so alive. And then I created businesses that supported my traveling, my adventures, my lifestyle, and I got into fashion design. And then I kept doing movies. And typically with Hollywood, when they want me in a movie, they actually come find me. Mm -hmm. So no matter where I am, they come and find me. I was living in Belize for a year and Hollywood kept coming and finding me. So I'm fortunate that they remember me, that people all over the world love me for for being Pippi Longstocking and that my career has gone on so long and also, you know, I look good. So I think that well, helps. You've kept it together very, very well. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 18 countries, 18 countries Pippi Longstocking premiered in. 18 countries around the world. Um, yeah, phenomenal. Yes. 13 languages. For me, that's still not the most. 13 languages. So not just English, I'm guessing Spanish, French, um, Portuguese, the main languages, oh. Chinese, Japanese, oh. of course, yeah. <laughs> Sweden, Swedish language. Mm-hmm. All these countries, mm-hmm. they knew who Pippi Longstocking were. So yeah. it definitely reached a lot of people. Well, Astrid sold, I think it said 65 million books. So you can imagine the massive reach of that character and of the books in the story. So um, yeah, so it, it's so amazing. It's really amazing to be able to Uh, be supported to fulfill your dreams when you're so young. You know, starting from eight and becoming an elite model, I started booking modeling jobs right away, then becoming a movie star and then flying all over the world, being able to continue my adventures all over the world. It was really so much that I had to work hard for, but I'm also incredibly fortunate to be able to do that and still be able to. So I'm having a lot of fun. Janot, it's fortunate. So at a young age, you got scouted, you became an elite model. You then yes. got um, casted for Pippi Longstocking, which was a worldwide phenomenal film. That's yeah. fortunate. What you've gone on to then do after that and keep the career until decades later, that's phenomenal because that's all of your own back. After Pippi Longstocking, it could have the show could have ended a few years after that. But here we are today. You kept the character bright and alive. You kept your body of work still coming in. Um, people are still asking for you. People are still requesting for you. Just just got on the internet. The name still runs around. So. Yeah, you've definitely made the most of you definitely made the most of it. It wasn't down to luck, I would say. I think luck plays a part in it, but it's also a lot of hard work. When I was doing pre-production, I had to be flown to Malibu to study privately method acting with Jeff Corey. I also studied at the actor studio in New York City with Molly McCarthy. And then I did 90% of my own stunts growing up as a um, a gymnast, an advanced gymnast, and also an equestrian, it was easy. But some of the stunts were actually really hard. Like I had to rear Alfonso, the horse, and that training horse, I got knocked off of him a number of times, like head first and body following into the grass. And you just have to get up, dust yourself off, and get back on the horse and, you know, go at it again. So, um, but I was perfectly suited, especially to do my own stunts and then had these amazing acting coaches and singing coaches that really helped to perfect what I was going to be able to do deliver on screen the fact the movie's been selling going on 32 years worldwide it's phenomenal I'm so so happy and um yeah just very very fortunate and I make the most of it just to say about those stunts people do bear in mind that you was age 11 and 12 doing your own stunts you wasn't a full grown-up you were still a child doing your own stunts we have actors today who are full grown-ups who won't do their own stunts so doing at the age of 10 11 and 12 riding horses swimming lifting up heavy stuff being around unpredictable animals, yeah, that is, that takes something. That definitely takes something. 
<laughs> it okay. takes, well, I have a, an affinity with animals and grew up around animals. My grandparents had a dairy farm with cows and horses, chickens, dogs, cats. I had my own horses growing up because on both sides of my family, there are equestrians. Um, and then of course I wound up with, you know, the monkeys that played Mr. Nielsen and also the beautiful horse that played Alfonso. So I've always had a thing uh, with animals and also I was so excited to do my own stunts. The stunts I didn't do were too dangerous. The backflips and also jumping off the roof, the other, all the other ones I did, but the ones that I didn't do were done by an Olympic gymnast named Allison. So I'm really proud of that part of it because not many actors get the opportunity to do most of their own stunts, singing the movie soundtrack and all that fun stuff. Oh, that's, that, is, that is definitely incredible. Because when Pippi Longstock came to release in 1988, I would say you was equivalent to Daniel Radcliffe after the second and third Harry Potter movie, being the childhood star of the generation. The film was released worldwide, like we mentioned, in 18 countries. There were books, cartoons on the series. Pippi really was the face of the face of children in the 80s, possibly even up until the 90s, until Matilda came along. And even then, I'd still say she rivals Matilda because Pippi Longstocking has been going on for a lot longer than Matilda, but we still talk of Pippi Longstocking. How did it feel to be recognized so far and wide from young age? Oh, God, it was so amazing. You know, uh, it was a long process. The first audition callbacks and then screen tests and final, final screen tests. When I finally found out that I got the role, Ken Anakin, the director, is Academy Award nominated director and Disney legend. He just said, come to the elevator. And I'm like, oh, God, OK, so I'm going to find out. The doors open. He goes, you got it. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to be a real movie star. Like, because I've been dreaming of it since I was just five years old. And finally, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. It was like getting on a rocket ship. And fortunately, it's, you know, done well for me so that it continues on. And like I said, when Hollywood wants me, they come and find me and I get to do more movies. Like, so fun. Yeah, you, you mentioned you was in Belize. You was out the country. You was off the radar, off the chart completely. <laughs> yeah. And you're still getting calls to come up and do this film, do this role. So yeah, you're definitely, definitely still in demand. And as long as you... As long as you keep yourself looking well, keep yourself looking gorgeous, um, the roles will continuously come come in all the time. As long as you're some with a some with a media personality, you can talk forever. Those roles will forever be there for Mrs. Tammy Erin, aka Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that's why I was so intrigued when I was approached to do the boxing match with the celebrity boxing with Mary Carey. I've known Mary for years. She was a fan of mine growing up and she dressed as me for Halloween a couple of times. So I was also on her show, Politically Naughty with Mary Carey. She was hilarious. So when we're when they're saying here, it's gonna be an exhibition match, you're gonna wear lingerie, it's gonna be really sexy and you're gonna entertain them. Mary and I were like, yeah, we're definitely into it. <laughs> we'll do it. Talking of the boxing, talking of the boxing. Yes, that was my next point I was just trying to come to. Can you see that? Yeah, I love it. In today's age, so in today's day and age in boxing, we're seeing matchups of all sorts and shapes and sizes. We're seeing YouTubers, basketballers, cage fighters, everyone's getting involved. But for me personally, the actress and model versus the adult movie star personally caught my attention the most. Tammy Erin versus Mary Kerry is definitely a fight I would like to see. Just tell us a bit, how did this come about? I was approached by the promoter and um, so he got in touch with my manager and my manager said, we'd love for you to do a celebrity boxing match. And I said, okay, that's great. Who are you thinking? They throw out a few names and they mentioned Mary. And I was like, well, I know Mary. I think we'd have a great time. So then uh, they were doing negotiations and all that. And then it was like, okay, you guys are going to, you know, you're going to meet up. Here's what we're going to do. I was already ready, like picking out my lingerie and doing some training to get ready. I'd done some boxing classes when I was in my early 20s, but I got into training mode. I started eating a keto, a strict keto diet to build muscle and to lean out. And also raw foods, which I've just been a big fan of raw foods for a long time. So yeah, I just started training every day, an hour and a half and just getting ready for it. But then with COVID, they had to postpone it. So hopefully we'll be able to pick it up again after everything uh, everything opens up and then I can also go over to the UK to do appearances. I have a manager over there to book me for live appearances and um, yeah, that'll be fun to see the fans. I love doing meet and greets with them. Yeah, boxing is, is a sport which um, not many people before, let's say 2020, decided to start getting into too much. But as of late, it's definitely got a lot of attraction. 
Had it been something before in your career, you said you'd done some classes of it when you was in your early 20s. Was this something then you considered, maybe I might dabble or maybe I might give it a try and see how this goes? No, I like my face too much. <laughs> I grew up, you know, my, my career has been movie, acting, television all over the world, and then modeling. So for me, it was like, I, I don't think, I think I'm strong and, you know, great and graceful, but I don't think that I would go into that because with Mary being an exhibition match, more like playful, entertaining, sexy, that's great. And we were told specifically, neither one of you don't go anywhere near the face. We were totally down with that. <laughs> I'm sure like the whole audience, shots, that's it. I'm sure the whole audience and the fans and everyone watching will be completely fine with that. As long as you two guys are in the ring doing your thing, putting on a show, <laughs> the whole venue will be happy. Um, this was celebrity boxing by Damon Feldman. Is that correct? Yes. Well, yeah, he's great. He's really fun, and he's produced some really, really great celebrity boxing shows. Yeah, I actually follow him on Instagram. I, I talked to him. I've been asking him about what's going to be happening next with all the fights. Uh, he's got some very interesting matchups and opponents lined up. Hopefully, we can see yourself and Mary down the line, or yourself and someone else down the line, or Murray and someone down the line, just anyone down the line. As long as you guys are in the ring, one shape or another, I'll be happy with that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but celebrity boxing seems to be doing very well re recently. They've just signed uh, NBA player Lamar Odin. So, they're going from strength to strength. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. I love Lamar. I met Chloe. Um, and uh, she was a fan, you know, a lot of people obviously are fans of mine and they know me growing up. But yeah, I met Lamar, such a sweet guy. So it's good that he's getting into that. I'm sure he'll be great at it. And also the YouTuber Logan Paul, it's like they're really crossing over into different forms of sport and media. It's really fun to see them, uh, you know, exploring and growing. For me, it was just for fun, entertaining and exploring. Like, I know that I'm a good athlete, but you know, let's have some fun with this and, and I'll be able to play, you know, play with Mary. <laughs> we'll all be glad to see you play with Mary. That'll be a sight that many people want to see. But yeah, you're right, Logan Paul, um, I think it was in 2018, Logan Paul and KSI, they got this all started, uh, the YouTubers or celebrities boxing. And now we've got you, now we've got other YouTubers trying it. We had a basketball player try it. And like I said, fingers crossed, I'm just waiting for the day the adult film star and the ad actress and model get in the ring and get it on. So I'll be waiting for that day. Um, yeah. Another thing that I saw from you is that uh, you had a music video you have a music video that's soon to come out or you was working on or something along those lines? Yeah. So you can find it on YouTube at Tammy Aaron and it's called Somewhere in Time. It's a collaboration I did with Dr. Plasticine. And in the video, I am singing and modeling on the beach in Malibu. Do you mind if we show so, a little bit to the people? Just a little snippet? Yeah, sure, of course. So this was filmed in Malibu. Okay, so what yeah. would it, any idea when the video will be released in full? We're finishing it, um, but for so far, I think for the 48 second teaser, it has something like 39,000 views for only 48 seconds of me. So mm -hmm. I think people like, you know, what I'm up to and what I'm creating. I think people are definitely interested. And I think there'll be a lot more likes and clicks to come when the full song's fully released. Um, by the sounds of it, you've got quite a bit going on. Um, at the moment, you seem to have projects after projects after project lined up. Is there any way your fans or your people who are interested in your career can keep keep up to date with what you're doing? Yeah, so of course, go to my YouTube channel, Tammy Aaron. You can find me on social media. Go to shophippie.com for merch. You can go to my Patreon, which is Tammy Aaron Official, for all the sexy photos, bikini, lingerie, implied nude, videos, personal shout outs, only fans coming soon and then cameo for celebrity video messages worldwide okay that's quite a bit so what i'll do check in the description you see all of that stuff there various ways to contact tammy say hi to tammy purchase merchandise and keep an eye on what she's doing because she's definitely still got a lot of stuff out there she's definitely still got a lot more to offer to all of us and our favorite childhood hero we're never going to forget pippi lonstocking <laughs> Before we round this up, Tammy, is there anything you'd like to say to your people, say to the crowds? Oh my God, yeah. So thank you so much for following me and loving me all these years. And I'm really excited about the new content that I'm sharing with the world. So yeah, follow me, keep up to date with me, and hopefully we'll reschedule this boxing match and you can see Mary and I get into it in lingerie. <laughs> I think the whole world's looking, waiting forward to that. They can't, look, can't wait to see that. Everyone's looking forward. 
Thank you. Yeah. It's been a pleasure having you on, Tammy. Um, we'll tune in Thank again you. at some point. This is Box Story, and this is the memo of the day. Ah, because... before you go, before we go, yeah. if you could be a superhero, what superhero would you call yourself, or what superhero would you be? Um, I'd be Pippi Longstocking because I'm a living I embodiment. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that already. <laughs> no problem. Tammy, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye.